This is the Crate Phantom. And eagle-eyed viewers might recognize that I'm not in my usual testing grounds. No, I'm a little bit further out than that today. And that's because the Phantom needs a bit of room to stretch its legs. So I've come out here to the Galactic Center, a little over 25,000 light years from the bubble, to make a point. You should really be flying this ship. And I know what you're thinking. Why? It's a cheaper, worse version of the Mark II crate. It's got less shields, less armor, less hard points, and no hangar bay. It also carries less cargo, and it's not even that much cheaper for all the things that you've lost. I feel like I'm getting ripped off here. Either I'm paying too much when I buy a crate, or I'm buying a lot of expensive air when I buy the Phantom. The official description for the Phantom labels it as a multi-purpose ship, quote, suited to a range of roles. And that's just not true. If we judge the Phantom as a multi-purpose ship, it's garbage. Easily outclassed by its sister ship, and the Python. And there's going to be people out there who argue, well, what if you want a faster, more maneuverable combat ship for strafing? Well, then you should have bought a Mamba. This is not a multi-role ship. It is, simply, the best exploration ship I have ever flown. Let me explain. When you decide to spend the next 300 hours of your life jumping to different star systems in the Elite Galaxy, the first thing you want to do is break out a spreadsheet. You're going to want to lighten your ship as much as possible. Tune the FSD. Go for lower, lighter class modules to increase your jump range. Removing anything you don't need. With the Phantom, they've done it for you. It's pre-stripped. The fighter bay is gone. They took out a whole hard point. They actively peeled away some of its armor plating, just to get it lighter. You get the impression that there's a performance division at DeLacy that's been allowed to tinker with things. And they've taken their job so seriously, you can only buy the Phantom with racing stripes already on it. They even took the coffee maker, just to save weight. I feel bad for flying this thing with clothes on. I'd fly it naked, but I'm afraid Yamix would find me. So, now I have the arduous task of deciding what I wanted to take with me, and then engineering it to be less of itself. But, while packing for my expedition, I decided to not care about any of that, engineered my FSD with materials I had in my back pocket, and set out. I was eager to hit the highway. This highway. The Neutron Highway. And it was a hell of a ride. When you're talking about a ship like the Phantom, it's hard to talk about the ship itself when you're so much more focused on what it can do. Because as beautiful as this ship is, at some point, it's just outclassed by the places it can bring you. And if you stay out here long enough, realistically, Undeniably, there's going to be a point where you just don't want to come home. And a little over five hours later, I did this. Jumping into Sagittarius A is truly one of the most remarkable experiences of any game. The sheer size and scope of what you're looking at breaks you a little bit. Your eyes grow wide. Your heart aches. Your mind is filled with overwhelming awe and dread at what you're seeing. It is, frankly, hard to comprehend what you're looking at. And it makes you feel small. And this is the ship that did that for me. It brought me here. And I love it because of that. It's a star. The star is important. Sagittarius A star because the star represents the fact that it's a very high energy radio source. The star is, you're supposed to pronounce it, just so you know. Oh, 
All right. It's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good thing I'm here. Right. It was so beautiful. I thought I'd bring a friend. Oh, hello. How are you? Uh, Sagittarius A star. The star is actually important because it's supposed to tell us that it's a highly active, very compact radio source. And the star was added to the A to make it seem more like impressive and awesome. But yeah, it's like a, a, a 4.3 million solar masses black hole at the core of our galaxy. But um, 7,800 parsecs away, which I keep having to convert to like uh, light years. It's about 35,000 light years. And it's obviously in Sagittarius. So it's the brightest radio source in that direction. Now, what, of course, we're seeing is not the black hole itself, but it's interactions with the environment around it, the gas that is falling in, being twisted and pulled and accelerated by the magnificently powerful gravitational fields. So, uh, yeah, that's what we see. The actual black hole itself, because it's so heavy, it does emit Hawking radiation, but it emits at a temperature of, like, 10 to the minus 14 Kelvin. So, right now, it's not emitting anything of consequence. But maybe in, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of years' time, maybe. But, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stars that actually orbit it as well. Like, some of them fly through at, you know, 30,000 I don't know, wait a second. Like, they fly through pretty fast. <laughs> I was going to say 30,000 kilometers per second. I think I was totally wrong. So yeah, they, uh, some of these stars were found back in the 80s, and they had to watch them for decades to see that their orbit actually brought them around this black hole. And that was one of the big pieces of evidence to show that there was a black hole there, that they could see these stars actually orbiting around something. And because we knew the distance to the stars, because we could tell their velocity by the Doppler shift on their lines, we could then estimate the mass of the object. And that's how we know there's 4.3 million solar masses, even though we cannot see it. So what do you think of the Phantom? You know what it's I like about the Cray Phantom? If you go to the back of the ship, there's like a little back door and a, like a, a little balcony you could stand on right at the back of the ship underneath the engines. I can't imagine that, you know, you're flying through deep space, cruising by the black hole, and you pop out there for, like, a smoke or something. I love, I like the Phantom. The, the thing is, the crates were always way bigger than the crates that I remember from the original game. But I think they, they're great ships. They fit a nice niche. I kind of wish you had the regular f crate so I could actually fly around in a fighter for a bit. But... I'm obviously an old-school elite explorer. I'm still flying around in my Asp Explorer, but I should probably buy myself one of these. I think I bought a, a crate just so I could walk around the cockpit because I do like the cockpit. It has all the details and stuff flowing around inside it. Well, I, I like the Phantom because they actually just lightened the whole thing for you anyway. It's you know got that one less hard point, no fighter bay, so I can do 61 light years at a clip with minimal engineering. That's not bad. You have a Guardian Frameshift booster in there. Oh, of course. Okay, just checking, because you know, those are those are the bomb. Scott, it was it was very nice having you. Thank you very much for joining me. Oh, thanks for showing me the black hole. It's been a while since I've been out here, and frankly, I <laughs> I uh, don't know if I can make the trek of myself anymore. But it's nice to have someone bring me out. If you're serious about exploring the galaxy. I cannot recommend the Phantom enough. It is truly an astounding machine. Somebody at the Lacey labeled this ship horribly wrong. On the surface, I know it may seem like a copy-paste job of the crate, but this is just a totally different animal. This is a legendary exploration ship, designed to move through the unknown. No wonder they call it the Phantom. Real quick, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you already have, then thank you again, and I'll see you next week.